if we would enhance uh, regenerative farming or this way of being in the world to, to a much bigger scale, of course it would be possible. And not only because there would be food enough, but also because one tomato from regenerative agriculture might have at least eight times as much nutrient and vitamin density as any other food that we might intake. Okay, so we have over 55 uh, different tree species. Within every species of tree, we have the five different typologies because we are not building for the big industry. So we want to build for our restaurants and our hotels. So we want ripe fruit over a long period of time so that we don't have to pick all of the fruit at the same time and work it. And also because we want that diversity. So imagine if you'd be a guest at our restaurants or even our hotel, in a space time of 15 days, you could experiment different types of pitches, for instance. And we think that's quite pleasant and interesting. Also because like this, we also have an enhanced biodiversity. And the beauty of this is that right now we're going to intensify um, the um, agroforest. So you're going to, to bring some more lines to make it more dense now that the first phase of the, of the system is integrated. And what we are seeing here are just two lines of trees which are integrated with some fava beans for the pig. So this is not the normal fava we consume as humans, they are for the pig. And we have on the left and on the right side some grass that will be cut it now to put back into the line of trees. And these will just be rolled down with a tractor so that we can put as much hydrogen into the soil. Mm -hmm. So this is a, complete, a completely uh, self-functional uh, system and the beauty of it is that we can also introduce animals. So after we put the grasses down and lo lower these down, some grass will come out again and we'll make, uh, we'll bring our chicken tractors again. Mm -hmm. And normally we're speaking in six hectares of this agroforestry, we can ha have around a hundred birds for four months, which is quite uh, productive and interesting. The other thing that is interesting is that while we are producing perennial cultures that we can also put in the lines of trees. We do stuff like tomatoes, aromatic herbs, uh, pff, you name it. That's in, the, in between la uh, lines we can produce real fava beans or potatoes, we can do strawberries. So um, as, as far as we get from, from, the, from our house, uh, that's where we have the, the intensive regenerative market gardening and here starts the super extensive. Mm -hmm. So this is where we produce around 10 tons of potato per year. This, this is where we do it. Okay. Or even the tomatoes, this is where we do it. So we try not to, to, um, to use the soil as a basis, but already uh, a system that is working, that is perennial, and then we just add the seeds and, and use the structure that we built for that purpose. So like okay. this, we don't have to, to dig anything. We are working under the principles of uh, um, succession agroforestry and syntropic agriculture. So mm -hmm. the, the most beautiful thing about this orchard is not properly that uh, we are doing a system that many other people are doing. The beautiful thing, I think, is that in Portugal, uh, normal, uh, normally Ernst Goetz would say that every orchard has to be planted from north to south so that you have maximal sun exposure for photosynthesis. That is not our problem in Alentejo. What we really need to sink and sort, of, uh, sort out is the water. So instead of doing these north to south uh, um, lines, we did it in key line, which is a method that allows you to uh, uh, adjust a little bit the, um, the level curves and, and like this we can withhold much more water, it's super effective, it's very cheap and that's something that I would advise to everybody to do as long as they have the mechanics of the orchard uh, uh, under control. Okay. So if you are completely depending on, on a tractor to go around and do the whole work, of course this method is not the best, uh, but if you do it like we do with almost no intervention, uh, everything almost uh, done by hand, then it's really uh, amazing the, 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 the enhance of, of uh, water infiltration that, that you can do by designing your orchard like this. So I think that's, that's the most beautiful. The rest is like most other people are doing, so different, uh, different uh, canopy sizes and different functions within the line, trees that lose uh, leaves in the um, in the summer and give light to the others that have a, a lower strate. So we just follow the books adapted to our reality. Um, 
I think that what is really curious about our uh, intervention is the key line design and that we produce a lot of food annuals mm -hmm. within the system. Um, you said that you have 55 different species of trees growing. Do you also have pioneer trees that are just there for boosting yes. the ecosystem but yes. without producing any So food? we have the first two, uh, yeah. always. Uh, I don't recall the name in, in English, but uh, they, the first really grows, as you can see in the images, yeah quite quite fast that's the first pioneer then we have a second one that has the 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 the, the, the same uh, or will achieve the same height but it will take much longer mm -hmm. um, and that's when we we come to the part which is a little bit of of uh, hocus pocus in the <laughs> successive uh, agroforestry design or even um, also syntropic agriculture because what we do is that when when the the second tree achieves the height that we understand is is important for us we start doing also epic uh, uh, cuttings in the first trees so that they send a message of stress to all of the other living organisms in the soil and the succession starts to to happen so wow. when we planted these trees uh, we use mycorrhize so we we put all of the the roots in into mycorrhize and they were planted like this just to support this element of communication Ah, you you get like a, a different atmosphere, different shades than you get in a, in a different place because we are really creating a, 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 an ecosystem that it's not common to see anywhere. It's really making a mimic of nature in a very productive way. Yeah. So I really advise this to everybody that wants to do a regenerative, sustainable or, or organic approach to their orchards. And the only limitations you have is how do you structure yourself industrially. So if you're selling for a supermarket and you need the perfect ripe, ripe fruit in that day of the year, these will be much more expensive and technically mm. demanding. But uh, if you have an approach of farm to, to table, if you have your di direct customers, uh, the, the output you take is much more than the input because everything is living from the same system. As I was saying before, this that we are planting, planting here it's, it's feeding the soil. These uh, herbs that we have here is what is going to cover our lines during the summer. So everything is very integrative. And while you're pruning, you're doing the same. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. It's very beautiful, it's very motivating. But of course, it, uh, it takes a lot of, uh, of, uh, of work and attention and knowledge. And then it's time, for instance, here we're looking at Artemisia, a grass because we are now designing a new system. We are doing it uh, um, with Mark from Quinta das Abelhas in uh, Freixo do Maio. He's amazing, I think he's the most known disciple from, uh, from uh, Syntropic uh, agri Agriculture. He's, he's trying to make just what they were doing in Ojos de Agua, in uh, Bahia, in Brazil, mm -hmm. in a Mediterranean context. Mm -hmm. And that is insane because, as we know, trees are the only living being that can change uh, 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 the climate mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a small place. You know? Through, through uh, expiration, transpiration, they can create their own uh, uh, climate. And that's what we are hoping here. Of course, very careful, without many expectations, but we believe so. And this Artemis, it's quite interesting because it's a perennial. It has a lot of potential, it's very healthy as well. But it's one of these herbs that you can have in your line and will allow you not to have so much spontaneous growth of other cultures. So it will, will take some of the minerals that most of, most of the spontaneous herbs we have here need and it will make a cover crop which is beautiful, aromatic mm. and helping in many senses. So not just with the herbs, but also if you, if you smell it. It's, it's, it's really uh, 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 an all-round, let's call it, or a round-up, uh, because um, it performs in many ways also with, with little animals and, and, and things that normally are a problem for trees. It helps a lot, so you, you learn some tricks to reduce your work, but it's, it's pretty intense and everything gets back to the same. So what is the most important is that you give back to the trees and to your soil, always what you took out. So you have to be much more worried about what you're putting in after you take out. Yeah. In okay. this kind of in this kind of products, because if you fail in that, then then you cannot produce anymore. That's the the, the most important. Yeah. So today people say you are what you eat, but the, then your trees are what you feed them too.
Yes, um, I heard lately, uh, so we are producing a festival called Soil to Soul in Switzerland and in Portugal. And we say that you are what you eat. And lately I heard a guy that started a different concept, but then he finalized his speech by saying, so maybe we are what, what we ate, ate. Which, yeah. which is already very awkward and irritating to hear. <laughs> because when you say we are what we eat, it goes back to the soil, yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, it's, it's a philosophical way of saying, if you don't respect where you come from or what you step yeah, yeah. into, it, it, it won't be good. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the base of life and our existence. And of course we forgot it. So we are what we eat and, and uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. But it goes much deeper to the, to the soil into the soul than just what we are conventionally eating every day. So it, it's much more than that. Yeah. Another thing that we eat is also hope. Yeah. That's also what, one of the things that keeps on keeps us moving. And that's uh, an important part of what you're doing here. It's, uh, it's not just regenerating the ecosystem on your farm, but it's also... You well, know, it's a drop of hope. I was, a, I was a consultant, so I was a kind of a Darth Vader before. I did everything to, to, to make money, not uh, knowing that I was harming other people sometimes. And uh, I stumbled upon a, a TED talk from Alan Savory where he was talking about desertification. And it came quite clear to me that desertification is not only natural. So without nature, there is no economy. And if you have no economy, people have to move somewhere else mm. to, to find their labor, to find some food, to find something to subsist. Without people, we don't have society. And the problem is that if you don't have society, you also don't have culture. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been gathering in the last 12,000 years since we are farmers and since the Holocene came towards us and changed everything. And I just realized by having three kids that I didn't want it to, to work anymore uh, just to make the money I was making, which was good and it was comfortable and it was brilliant. But I said from that moment on, that it was around six years before we bought and founded the, uh, the farm, Teramai, um, that I wanted to do something positive for the future of my kids because uh, this land doesn't belong to us. The, it was lent to us by our succession. So it's, mm -hmm. we have to, to give it in a better condition or at least the same to our mm -hmm. children. Uh, uh, um, then we, we, we just uh, got it for ourselves. So in that sense, that's the work we're doing here. So we're trying to create a, a, a drop of hope uh -huh. that shows that it's possible to do regenerative agriculture while healing the soil, bringing communities back to desertified uh, locations with a strong circular economy that is self-sustainable. So it's not about being multimillionaires with regenerative agriculture. You can do it in a different way. I think it's easier to lose money with agriculture than to, than to make it. Um, and hopefully uh, to motivate a lot of people to become farmers and to carry on this work, which is so essential for the future because in the whole of Europe you have less than 10% of the farmers are under 40. In Portugal that goes down to six. If we speak of parity there are 3% of women farming in Europe. That's nothing because the agriculture is not sexy and regenerative agriculture which nobody believes in that's always the first question in conventions. Could you feed the world with regenerative agriculture? Of course not. But it's not because regenerative agriculture doesn't have everything we need to do it. It's just because only 8% of the farmers in Europe are doing organic farming and 2% of them are using regenerative, uh, uh, um, a regenerative skill set or, or, or tools. So if we would enhance uh, regenerative farming or this way of being in the world to, to a much bigger scale, of course it would be possible. And not only because there would be food enough, but also because one tomato from regenerative agriculture might have up time, at least eight times as much nutrient and vitamin density mm -hmm. as any other uh, uh, food that we might intake. Plus, it doesn't have uh, all of the antibiotics and bullshit that big companies that are the, the, the ones that are producing the seeds that feed us and the medicaments that are healing us. So, it's a, it's a completely dead end, mm -hmm. the way we are farming today, from the seed to the method and the food and the medicaments that are treating us, because it's not, it's not going, it's not going to, to work many years anymore. There mm -hmm. will be a collapse very soon. It makes yeah. no sense. So 
That's why we are here, to prove that it is possible to have a kind of a circle, circular economy that will allow us to prepare mankind for a dramatic raise on, uh, on temperature and, and uh, a weather um, complexity that we humans will never understand. Yeah. Because, we're, we're, for instance, in Portugal this year, we, we're having heavy rains of 20 millimeters in the 1st of May. In the last 10 years, that never happened. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it's not that it's good or bad. We just have to understand what is going to happen and start to develop strategies that will allow us to take the best out of it when it happens. Yeah. Just a quick post to tell you about the official partner of the Deep Seed podcast, and that's Soil Capital. Soil Capital is a company that accelerates the transition to regenerative agriculture by financially rewarding farmers who improve the health of their soils. Because we, we forget a lot that agriculture was the first culture that uh, mankind talked about, uh -huh. or at least the first tr translation in that sense. And, and it's the base of everything, because I also believe that that's how we developed into, into mankind. It was because our real brain is not exactly here, it's the gut. And, and it was through feeding ourselves that we developed ourselves, because we developed a memory, uh -huh. you know? Um, and in that sense, the only thing that we, we, we have to do, because it's not even that we are learning new techniques. In many cases, we are going back to something that we knew before. The only problem is that we're forgetting it, because most of us are living in a kind of a fight between the real life and the digital world. Mm -hmm. And digital world is very crazy because it gives you the, the, the feeling that you don't need to know shit. Mm -hmm. Because you have everything, all of the power of the world in your hand. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. We are completely, completely depending on many factors. In, in Portugal, just happened two days ago before we are here together, we had a, a, a cutout of power, which was general in the whole country and also Spain. And who can tell us that that is not going to happen again? And if it happens for four days, you know what happens? There is no internet. There is no light, there is no food, there is no transportation, there is no shit. Mm -hmm. So either you are in a self-sufficient environment or you'll have a lot of problems. And that's what we, we have to, to, to think as well globally, is to go out of this uh, uh, vanity, insane craziness of globalization, because it's not going to work anymore. Yeah. So we have every land, every continent. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have to stop communicating and sharing and proliferating together, but it means that we have to, to, to have some, some level of self-sustainability so that we can ensure our subsistence when problems that we cannot control mm -hmm. comes to, come toward us. And that will happen even more often in the future. And sometimes we just forget that, that we are completely depending on what these insane and crazy uh, um, succession of events that brought us to to the earth as a living uh, uh, um, I don't even know how to say it but to exist in a, in, in a universe where we are alone it's depending on other things than ourselves yeah so we have to be humble and instead of taking the most out of the land we, we have to nurture it and and be part of the system so. yeah. That's what we are doing here. We do a lot of mistakes. We lose a lot of money. Um, but it never felt so good. <laughs> awesome. That was great. That was great. Love it. Love it. It's amazing.